Hey, it's Neville here, and I have worked from home for years and have gone through a litany of different productivity methods, and I've actually come upon about 15 rather non-conventional ones that tend to work for me quite well, and I hope you pick up something from this list. So let's get started. Number one is you wait till the very last minute to complete something. So whoever claims that procrastination doesn't boost productivity has obviously never finished a 20 page research paper the night before it's due. You see, work expands to fit the time available to complete it. That means if you have an entire week to finish a project, you'll go really slow and finish it right before it's due. But if it's due in three hours, your focus and productivity will instantly shoot through the roof because you've got three hours to finish it. So you'll probably finish it in three hours. So while this is not exactly the most healthy approach, you can't deny its effectiveness. And I did say that these are kind of rather unconventional ways. So yeah, wait till the last minutes to finish something. And guess what? You'll finish it real quick at the last minute. Number two is you schedule something fun or expensive. Here's how it works. If you want to finish your work by 2 p.m. today, you simply just schedule a fun activity for 2.30 p.m. Now, there's bonus points if the activity is either expensive, paid for in advance, non-refundable, or something you do with a group of friends. It sure would suck to lose money, miss out on fun, and let your friends down, so it's time to put the pedal to the metal and get your stuff done. So this is a great little way to finish something by a certain time by scheduling something fun or expensive that you can't really back out of. So you have to finish your work before then. Number three, add virtual social pressure. Have you ever noticed like at the gym, you move faster, you exercise harder, and you rest less when other people are watching you? But if you're by yourself, you'll probably just like lift two weights and stop. Well, the same goes for working at home. If there's other people around you doing a similar activity or watching you, you tend to work a little bit harder. I sure do. I've done this thing where I add virtual social pressure to my work sessions by broadcasting my work sessions to the world. That's right. I'll go on Facebook Live and click start and just start working on screen. That's it. It's pretty boring for people to watch, but it definitely helps me finish my work faster. I've done this on YouTube Live. I've done it in my office. I've done it on the balcony, and it basically share my screen sometimes and just put the camera on me and make sure that I'm working. And during these times, I get so much work done. So it might be something interesting to try. Number four, use extreme rewards and punishment. I'm not talking about treating yourself to an ice cream cone if you finish your work, although that could work. I'm talking about taking things to the extreme. Like I can't eat until this is done. I can't talk until this is done. I can't sleep until this done. I can't stand up till I get this done. I can't go to the bathroom till I get this done. When you're really hungry or your bladder is about to explode, you'll finish work at hyper speed. The other thing I do is I'll make bets with people that are kind of extreme or painful to me. So if I have to give someone a hundred dollars because I don't lose weight or finish something at a certain time, I'm kind of like a hundred dollars, not that big of a deal but let's say it's a thousand dollars. Hmm. Well, I personally don't just want to give someone a thousand dollars. So that is a painful goal for me. So you have to find something that's painful for you. It doesn't have to be a number. It could be an activity or doing something that you just find reprehensible. And if you take it to the extreme, I bet that you will finish your goal. So you don't have to hit that extreme punishment. Number five, you plan a fun work night, perhaps even with some alcohol. So, so far our work from home productivity hacks involve some sort of pressure, but too much pressure can also be overwhelming and have like an anti-productive effect. So whenever I start dreading my work, I know it's time to chill out and have some fun. So instead of squeezing every ounce of productivity and forcing myself to work as fast as possible, I kind of do the opposite sometimes. So this could be just like hanging out on the couch, crack open a beer, no worries, no pressure, no rush. And the funny thing that happens, especially if you're doing creative type work like copywriting, is that when you're relaxed, you tend to get better ideas. So a lot of times if it's late in the evening, I'm still doing work and not finished, I might crack open a beer, but not like five beers, just like one, and kind of just like walk around, look outside, go out on the balcony, go for a walk, just basically chill out. And weirdly enough, 
That makes me way more productive and get better ideas. Number six, drink caffeine strategically. So coffee and caffeine can be the ultimate work from home productivity tool if you know how to use it properly. If you're drinking coffee every day and every day you up the amount and basically at some point caffeine loses its effect, then it kind of is wasted on you. So one, I always suggest that you should probably take the weekends off of caffeine. That helps keep the caffeine boost there all the time. But the other thing you could do is use it for focus and creativity when you need it. So if you're about to sit down for a writing session or create a presentation or do a client call, I'd say drinking caffeine right before that or during that will definitely give you a little bit of boost. So if you're losing your potency of caffeine, you might want to start taking the weekends off and then start using caffeine only when you actually need that boost because it really can help your mind become more playful and energetic. And when your mind is playful and energetic, you get better ideas, you perform better and you have more fun. So caffeine, great writer's tool, but use it in the right way. Number seven, kill all distractions using browser extensions. Most of us working from home are using a computer in some way. And when we open up that web browser, man, there's so much good stuff. You got Facebook looking at you, you got Instagram looking at you, you got YouTube looking at you, you got all sorts of Reddits and stuff like that out there that are just sucking up your time. And that stuff is great, but not when you're trying to work. So when you're at home alone, there's no accountability, nobody watching over your shoulder and nothing to protect you from getting sucked into that social media vortex. What you can do is download a couple of clever browser extensions. I personally use about three of them. And there's one called Focus 45 that you hit a button on your Chrome browser and automatically all the distracting sites that you go to are blocked for 45 minutes. Now, a lot of times I actually will need to open up YouTube for work. I will need to open up Facebook for work. So Focus 45 has a cool little thing where it makes you type in a sequence of words in order to actually use that for one minute. So I can type in that sequence of words, use Facebook for one minute, and then it locks me out again. It's a really, really neat and well done extension I use all the time. And it's definitely saved me a lot of distractions. The other thing is the Facebook newsfeed eradicator. So I actually have to use Facebook quite a bit for work. The problem is the Facebook newsfeed is designed to suck you in. And that's great if you want to just do nothing and spend some time browsing Facebook. But if you're just logging into Facebook to send a message, well, you'll get sucked down this vortex without being asked for it. So I use a thing called Newsfeed Eradicator, and it's basically just a Chrome extension that on Facebook, it just eliminates the newsfeed on Facebook. That's it. Um, the groups are there, your little notifications are there, your messages are there. All it does is remove the newsfeed. And I can't tell you what a small difference that this makes in your browser. You almost don't notice it, but then it makes a huge difference in your productivity because you don't get sucked down this Facebook rabbit hole. And the last one is a DF tube. This hides YouTube video recommendations in the sidebar and disables autoplay. And it actually has like different uh, things where you can hide the home screen. You can hide the right side recommended videos. And YouTube is one of the greatest things in the world for just distracting yourself and going down a rabbit hole of videos. And that's fun, but not when you're working. So I often have to look up YouTube video tutorials and stuff like that. And the cool thing about this extension is now I can watch the video, I can see all the comments, but it blocks all the recommended videos. So I only watch that video, finish it, and then leave. It's a great productivity hack, these extensions that help you. Number eight, write nightly old school physical to-do lists. Everyone works differently on their to-do list method, but I love a physical to-do list. I've been doing them for 10 plus years and it has been fantastic. People make two big mistakes when making to-do lists. Um, number one, they overcomplicate things, put too much stuff on them. Just only put what you need to do for the day and that's it. Um, number two, they don't plan ahead. This means they'll make their to-do list up on the go the day of. See, I never do that. I'll never add things to my to-do list the same day. So if someone says, hey, Neville, can you do this and put this on your to-do list? I'll be like, yep, it's on my to-do list for tomorrow because you need to have just the list of stuff you're gonna do for the day. And once you've done it, you're done. So both of these can be solved with the old school to-do list method. And I'll, I actually have a whole other video on how I do that. 
and tons of people use that style that I've created over the years. So basically you just grab a pen and a notebook and write out the two to four tasks you want to accomplish the following day. No need to plan out the entire month. No need to enter into a fancy app. No need to set a bazillion alarms, just a pen, paper, and a quick bullet list. That's it. And the trick is to do this before going to bed. That way you wake up knowing exactly where to start, exactly where you're going to end, and you won't waste half your day planning out your day. Number nine is harness those aha moments. And you only get about one or three of these per day in my experience. You see, sometimes inspiration strikes at the weirdest times, and it happens when you're showering, folding laundry, watching Netflix, and what you should do is stop what you're doing and take advantage of it. Usually the activity like showering, folding laundry, Netflix is not that important compared to a really good idea. So working at home gives you flexibility, and that means you can capture these little moments. So if you're zombie crawling through a project at noon, just take a break. Don't fight against the wind. And when you have that aha moment and it jolts you with energy at 10 p.m., crack open your laptop and enjoy the wind at your back. Just start working on it. This doesn't mean sit around and do nothing until you feel like inspired. It basically means that take advantage of little moments of inspiration. It's crazy once you're inspired and your brain is all fired up about an idea, how you can all of a sudden crack open the laptop, break out the computer, break out a piece of paper, and just write and create for a long time with really good ideas. And to waste that is a real shame. So always look, be on the lookout for aha moments. One little tip I have is I get a ton, like a ton of aha moments in the shower. And I bought this little paper and pad and pencil thing that goes in your shower, like via a sticky suction cup. And it's called Shower Notes. I think I bought it on Amazon for like nine bucks. And that thing has saved me so many good ideas by being able to write notes in the shower. So harness those aha moments. Number 10, personalize your workspace to you. So you've probably heard that an organized workspace is a productive workspace. And for me personally, I think that's true, but everyone is different. Some people like clean, sterile environments to work in. Some people like messy, chaotic, weird environments to work in. It just depends on you. So what I like may be different for you and for someone else. So some people work better at a squeaky clean desk. Others thrive in clutter. Some people work better in boring, empty spaces. Some people need stimulating environment. Some people work better in silence. Others need loud music. Once you figure out what works best for you, you will be far more productive at home. And here's the cool thing. Sometimes you can mix it up. Sometimes I love listening to music in the background. Sometimes I hate it and I find it very distracting. So it just depends. Don't be set in your ways. Try to mix up your workspace from time to time. Um, this can mean having an adjustable desk that goes up and down. So you can stand sometimes and sit sometimes. You can schedule regular stretch breaks. You can maybe make a mess in your office and see if it makes you work better. I don't know. There's no one size fits all. Test out different setups. Choose what works best for you. Screw what everyone else says. This is not generalized advice that works for everyone. So try it out. Mess up your workspace. Clean it up. See what works best. Number 11, invest in proper lighting. Holy cow. Over the years, this has been a major problem. And once I got it figured out, geez, it was such, it was such a big benefit to just have proper lighting. Now, this usually is because you're doing video calls. So a lot of people, when they're home, do a lot of video calls. And the problem with video calls I found over the years as someone who does them literally every day is that I had to set up all my lighting and move lamps around. And then if the natural light's coming through the window, it makes one side of my face really bright and the other side really dark. So I got to shift the lighting. So basically I've done a couple of videos and posts about how to set up home office lighting. So basically you have one button that you push and professional grade lighting comes on all the time, day, night, it doesn't matter. It's steady, it's stable, and it always looks good. So I would say maybe check out some of those, but if you can get some lighting that definitely you push one button and it all turns on and it lights up your face properly, it lights up the whole room, it is such a big benefit because you could start a video call right away, push one button and you're done. Instead of having to shuffle lights around and one side doesn't look good, so check out some of my other posts on that. 
Home office lighting, if you do it correctly, can go a really long way. Number 12, get pissed at your work. That's right, get mad at it. Don't always be appreciative. You, it's okay to be pissed that you have to do something. You know, you don't always have to love every little thing you do. Some stuff just sucks. So treat it as such. Be like, goddamn stupid task. I, I hate you. I'm going to finish the heck out of you. You basically just get really, really, really mad at it. So if it's stressing you out, taking your time, draining your energy, screw that task. If you need to not motivation to knock out a boring project, make it the enemy. Don't stop working until you completely destroy that stupid freaking task. So don't pretend you love it, curse at it, hate it, do it out of spite, and then crush it. Number 13, snoop on your competition and get jealous. That's right. One way to stay motivated and keep motivated is to look at competition that's doing similar things to you. Look at what they're doing. Look at all the success they're having. Look at all the money they're making and then get jealous. Jealousy is a very powerful motivator. A lot of people will say, don't, don't be jealous of how the other people have internal motivation. Well, guess what? There is nothing more motivating than some MF that you hate that's doing better than you. And yeah, use that inner rage to work harder than them. So when you realize that they're hustling while you're slacking, it'll jolt you back to action. So use that inner rage to work harder. Number 14, just don't do it. Just don't do it? You mean like just sit there and let it stay unfinished forever? Uh, yeah, yeah. If a task has been on your to-do list for more than two or three days and you keep pushing it back and back and back, then clearly it's not that important. Turns out only a very small percentage of tasks that you write down are kind of truly essential. The rest are kind of not that essential. So sometimes work from home productivity simply means not doing something so you have more time for the important stuff. This has been a tough thing for me to learn through the years that there are some tasks that are just simply not that important. And if it's been on my to-do list for a few days, I just take it off. And you know what? If it's really important, it'll re-come to the top. Someone will remind you of something you have to do or you'll know that it's important. So just, just remove it. If it's been there for a couple of days, don't do it. And then finally, number 15. And this one is stop being a little bitch about it. Look, your life is good. Right now in the world, things are good. You have clean water, electricity, access to the world's information. You have an education. You're able to read. You have a supercomputer in your pocket that you're listening to this on. You have no imminent threat of danger. You have access to everyone on earth. You live in an air-conditioned environment. You have social services, life-saving vaccines, advanced medical care, an average lifespan of 85 plus years. You don't have to do manual labor. You have an easy life compared to your ancestors and you can learn anything for free. So if you think that, oh my God, everything's so hard for me. I, I can't get gigs. I can't get a job. Well, guess what? Your ancestors would flip the hell out at how easy your life is compared to theirs. I mean, if you were born just 200 years ago, if you had bad eyesight, you better start squinting because there's no solution for that like glasses. If you needed surgery, you better drink some whiskey before some witch doctor saws your body open with the rusty blade while you're still awake. If you got a weird illness, some voodoo doctor would crush up random leaves, cut you, rub them in the wound, and hope for the best. And if you wanted to know something about the world, well, you better hope one of your friends knows because you're out of luck because you don't have the internet back then. Or if you wanted to travel somewhere, you better be super duper rich and have six months of transit time to go anywhere. Life basically sucked compared to what it was now. If you are reading this on a computer, you have access to tools and information that 200 years ago, people could not even fathom would exist. So if you are having a tough time with some of your work, just remember that life is awesome right now. You've got all this stuff, all this advantage, all this opportunity compared to our ancestors. So just quit being a little bitch and finish off your work. I'm Neville Medora, and I really hope that this helped you get a little bit of inspiration for productivity. And I will go over this list real quick um, so you can remember. And I hope one of these 15 methods at least jolts you back into doing your work right now. And you should probably not be on YouTube watching this, actually. <laughs> so let's say number one, 
wait till the last minute to finish something. Number two, schedule something fun or expensive that you can't back out of. Number three, add virtual social pressure where you tell someone that you're going to work or show your work online. Number four, use extreme rewards and punishments. Number five, plan a fun work night where you're having fun instead of working. Number six, drink caffeine strategically. Number seven, kill distractions using Chrome web extensions. Number eight, write an old school to-do list before bed so you know what you're going to do the next day. Number nine, harness those aha moments of inspiration throughout the day. Number 10, personalize your workspace, mix it up, be messy, be clean, whichever you want, whatever you work best in. Number 11, invest in good home office lighting. Make sure you got good lighting around that's comforting or very bright, whichever way you like it. Number 12, get pissed at your work. Not everything has to be fun. Sometimes you just got to do something, get pissed and finish it. Number 13, snoop on your competition. Yeah, check out what they're doing. And if they're doing better than you, well, then let that motivate you to work harder. Number 14, just don't do it. If there's something that's been on your to list for a long time, don't do it. It's not that important, apparently. And then number 15, stop being a little bitch about it. A lot of us have to do work that we don't like sometimes, and you just got to do it. Things are really good in life, really good. You're working at home on a supercomputer through the internet, talking to people around the world. You've got it good. This is amazing. Life is amazing. Just finish your work. Hope this helped you a lot. And these were some methods that I personally have used over and over and over again and have helped me a lot and I hope they help you too. My name is Neville Medora. I will talk to you later.